Well, our top story tonight, there was an unprecedented press conference today from CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia. This comes in response to a U.S. Senate committee's report that the agency tortured terror suspects. CIA Director John Brennan delivered a vigorous defense of his agency. In many respects, the program was uncharted territory for the CIA, and we were not prepared. We had little experience housing detainees, and precious few of our officers were trained interrogators. But the president authorized the effort six days after 9-11, and it was our job to carry it out. He also called some of the techniques detailed in the Senate report abhorrent, but he also said they were authorized. Many lawmakers say they went too far. I understand the reasons that governed the decision to resort to these interrogation methods. And I know that those who approve them and those who use them were dedicated to securing justice for the victims of terrorist attacks and to protect Americans from further harm. I know their responsibilities were grave and urgent, and the strain of their duty was onerous. I respect their dedication and appreciate their dilemma, but I dispute wholeheartedly that it was right for them to use these methods, which this report makes clear were neither in the best interests of justice, nor our security, nor the ideals we have suffered, we have sacrificed so much blood and treasure to defend. We turn now to Arise News correspondent Leela McDowell, who reports from our nation's capital. Hey, Leela. Hi, Debbie. Well, CIA Director John Brennan strongly defended the CIA amid growing calls for his resignation. He disputed the Senate report on its two key points, that the torture or enhanced interrogation techniques, EITs, did not provide good intelligence, and that the CIA misled Congress. But walking a fine line, Brennan reaffirmed his agreement with President Obama for making torture illegal. Take a listen. Our reviews indicate that the detention and interrogation program produced useful intelligence that helped the United States thwart attack plans, capture terrorists, and save lives. There were no easy answers. And whatever your views are on EITs, our nation, and in particular this agency, did a lot of things right during this difficult time to keep this country strong and secure. Brennan stated that information from the EITs could have helped in the capture of Osama bin Laden, but did not dispute the report's findings of brutal torture in black sites, ranging from waterboarding to forced rectal feeding, constant beating, stress positions, confining prisoners in small boxes, sleep deprivation, and one prisoner freezing to death after being chained naked to a wall. And while he called some of those techniques abhorrent, he would not call it torture. Republicans issued their own report, strongly refuting the findings of the Senate's 6,000-page expose. Here's former Vice President Dick Cheney in an exclusive interview with Fox News. The report's full of crap. We did exactly what needed to be done in order to catch those who were guilty on 9-11 and to prevent a further attack. And we were successful on both parts. There was no effort on our part to keep him from that. He was just as with the terror surveillance program. On the terror surveillance program, he had to personally sign off on that every 30 to 45 days. So the notion that the committee's trying to peddle it, somehow the agency was operating on a rogue basis and we weren't being told or the president wasn't being told, it's just a flat out lie. Democratic Senator Mark Udall, backed by human rights groups and liberal Democrats, has called for a clean sweep of the agency and for its leadership to be held accountable. But the president is strongly defending his CIA chief and says he wants to move forward, not backward. As of now, the administration is firm. There will be no prosecutions. And Debbie, critics... And Debbie, critics are saying that without any accountability, the stain of torture on America's honor, as President Obama frames this, will not be washed away. Debbie? Well, Leela, uh, as you and I know, Senator Dianne Feinstein responded to Director Brennan's statement almost in real time. Talk a little bit about that. 
Well, it was really interesting. She was tweeting throughout his statement. And in fact, when he said that the information that was received as a result of the EITs did lead to the capture and eventual, well, the killing of Osama bin Laden, she tweeted out, no, he didn't. Check, you know, page 378, hashtag read the report. And she did that throughout the entire statement that he made. Yeah, very interesting. She was very uh, 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 responsive in that regard. So Brennan outlines a series of reforms, what are they? Well, I think this is the thing that is also disturbing people who want to see the CIA reform. He did not go into detail. He did say, however, that indeed what he would do was increase oversight of interrogations. Uh, they also talked about better data keeping for Congress and other kinds of measures, but did not go into detail. And also, if you recall, he did not use the word torture. He was very careful not to do that. Indeed, for the full 40 minutes that she, he was up. Now, in 2009, Brennan said that enhanced interrogation techniques, or what many are calling torture, was a recruitment bonanza for terrorists. How does that resolve itself or square with his strong defense of these techniques today? Well, it's kind of an interesting dichotomy because he also said at that time that it undermined national security, that it made allies reluctant to work with the United States, and, and that it also created dangers for, you know, our soldiers in the field. But today, he was very clear to say he stood by those words. When they asked him about it, he was clearly uncomfortable, Debbie, but he said he stood by those words, and he agreed with President Obama, of course, that this kind of technique should be illegal. However, when he was asked if this is this could be continued in previous administrations. He said he didn't make policy and it was up to Congress, lawmakers, and the next president to decide whether these techniques would ever see the light of day again. Mm, and are, they could. Yeah, indeed. Well, some are calling for John Brennan's resignation. How likely is that? Well, not likely right now. Uh, Senator Mark Udall on the floor said that, you know, it was very important to see uh, some heads roll because without accountability, there's not going to be some change for these, what he called horrendous practices. Republicans are firmly behind the CIA and they've called the Senate report fiction. And of course, they are going to be in control of Congress next year. And the president issued a statement immediately following Brennan's news conference saying Brennan is doing an exceptional job. So unless we see a really loud outcry and a lot of pressure, it's very unlikely that any individual will be, will be held accountable for these practices. You know, Leela, as we understand it, the Department of Justice has already reviewed this report and they declined to bring any charges at that time, which was a little bit uh, t uh, somewhat time ago. Why are they declining to bring charges? Well, what, uh, the de what the Department of Justice said, Attorney General Eric Holder said, is they looked at this report. There wasn't any new information that they hadn't already considered uh, when they opened two criminal investigations back in 2009 of the CIA and these enhanced interrogation techniques. Um, and they said the main reason was because much of that information was classified and they wouldn't have enough to actually get any kinds of any kind of conviction. All right. Leela McDowell reporting for us from Washington. Thanks so much, Leela. Thank you.